Hi everyone, it's Miss Helms again. We are going to now practice or uh, try out some problems with these special right triangles for 30, 60, 90 special right triangles. So, taking a look at number one, we are given that this short leg has a length of nine units. So, to solve for our missing side lengths, we're missing the hypotenuse and the longer leg. Well, from our notes, we know that the hypotenuse and the shorter leg have a two to one ratio. So, to solve for the hypotenuse, we take our shorter leg and just multiply it by 2. So, 9 times 2 is 18. So, therefore, x is 18. Also, knowing what we or using uh, what we found out in our notes, using our shortcut, we know that to find our longer leg, we simply take the shorter leg, 9, and multiply it by radical 3. However, remember, not all of you are going to remember this, and that's okay. It's actually, it's, it's not a bad thing not to be able to memorize this. We want to make sure that you understand it. So, instead, if you do not remember that, how can we solve for that missing side length? Well, we have a right triangle, and we know the Pythagorean theorem. We have two side lengths, we're only missing one. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side length. So, setting this up, we know that 9 squared plus y squared is equal to 18 squared. So to solve this, we're going to go ahead and take 9 squared, which is 81. So 81 plus y squared is equal to 18 squared, which is 324. So to get y squared by itself, we're going to subtract 81 from both sides. So 324 minus 81 is going to give us 243. So y squared is equal to 243. So then we want to take the square root of both sides. So to take the square root of 243, we want to say, well, what are the factors of 243? Well, let's see. Using some mental math, I know that the factors of 243 are 81 and 3. I may have found that other ways, just saying. So, the square root of 81, well, we know 81 is a perfect square, so therefore the square root of 81 is 9, and left under the radical is 3. Ta-da! So, y is 9 radical 3, if you keep it in simplified radical form. If you don't, that's okay. If you take the square root of 243, plug it in your calculator, give me your decimal, that's fine too. Just I'm just showing that there are ways to simplify this in radical form. So, Either way, we got to the same answer of y being 9 radical 3 or your decimal approximation. So let's take a look at number 2. Number 2 is very similar, except now it gives you the hypotenuse. But we're going to use the same method. If we know the hypotenuse, then we know the shorter leg. We find the shorter leg by taking the hypotenuse and dividing by 2, since it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So y has is 6. If we want to use a shortcut, we know that x will be whatever the shorter leg is, which is y, 6, times radical 3. But we don't have to use that shortcut. So instead, I'm going to say we don't know what that is. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 6 squared is equal to 12 squared. So x squared plus 36 is equal to 144. And we're going to go ahead and to get x squared by itself, we're going to subtract 36 from both sides. So x squared is equal to 108. And we're going to take the square root of both sides. Again, at this point, you can have a decimal. It's OK. Um, but I'm going to simplify it in, uh, and keep it in simplified radical form. So um, we have x is equal to the square root of 108. Well, factors of 108 are 36 times 3 and I know the square root of 36 is 6 so this is 6 what's left under the radical 3 so again x is 6 radical 3 or your decimal approximation either one is correct but really what we're showing here is that you can use a shortcut or you can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side length don't feel like you have to memorize those shortcuts nice job